Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic and Mysticism. Here to talk to you today about angels and archangels and magic. Now, when we're talking about angels, the way I'm defining it is as um, celestial beings who are described in the um, Jewish, Christian, uh, Muslim, both the canonical and apocryphal literature in those areas. I understand that there are uh, angel-like beings in other cultures. Um, however, I'm kind of sticking with um, those that are in um, those three. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the Old and New Testament, but also the literature that um, about angels that were, I guess, inspired from those sources. Okay, so um, when we're talking about angels, it's important to remember that angels not only uh, work to create positive, constructive outcomes, but also they can be used to create harm. Harm, you say. Well, if you look at the Old Testament, you will understand the mythology of angels and what they're capable of when you look back at um, you know, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and a few other places in the Old Testament. That angels, which I kind of think of them, especially the, the archangels, as kind of spiritual soldiers who are there to uh, exact the will of the divine. Now, I understand that that's not, they're not all, angels aren't soldier-like. Um, some of them have different purposes. Um, however, in the, that instance, it does seem like they're, they're just very much, very persistent and very much on a mission, kind of like soldiers. Um, so there was a point where I really didn't resonate with angels too much, um, you know, especially when I was younger. I felt like they was too white light, new agey, um, touched by an angel type of stuff that I couldn't really connect with it. Um, and and that, that particular archetype of the angels. Um, however, as I've gotten older and had more experience with angels, my perception of them and my knowledge of them have grown into kind of a more fuller, fuller understanding of them. way that I developed that fuller understanding was by doing some basic uh, Kabbalistic magic and path working where I came in contact with uh, Michael and with Gabriel. Michael, by the way, if you ever wanted to, um, an angel to, an archangel to beseech for protection, he would be the one. He is um, the one who cast uh, um, the, Lucifer out of heaven. Uh, Gabriel, you know, different story. But in any case, uh, I came in contact with uh, those two and various meditations. And I could, when they were present, you could feel their power. It was very, uh, very intense. It was not like something I've ever felt in other spirit beings. It felt like it was... Uh, almost like a physical pressure, like a, a, a like a wind that is like 200 miles an hour that can just crush you. In fact, at that those times, I had to ask them to let up and adjust their energy because if you know when they talk about um, in the Bible about these angels having so much power that they can you know instantly kill somebody, you know that's that's what you would feel just by a, an intention. So they instantly gave, gained my respect. And I also gave more credence to some of the, the older literature about these particular beings. So why work with uh, angels to begin with? And but, but just to kind of get back, also when we're talking about Archangel, I'm not just talking about uh, Michael and Gabriel. There are many others. Uh, there is uh, Uriel, there is Raphael. Haniel, uh, Raziel, so I don't want to get, get the impression that there's only two. Um, archangels are kind of the higher order of angels. Um, so, just as a side note. Um, so back to why do we work with angels? Um, one is that angels work exclusively in the human service industry. Um, they don't require tips, unlike other beings. 
Uh, they don't, it means that they don't require offerings or payment or anything else. It's just their, it's their um, internal makeup to just help human beings. And within the, this, their particular sphere of uh, influence and expertise. Also, you know, it's number two, angels, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Uh, angels will kind of get down and help you uh, according to their mission and their purpose. Um, cultists seek angels not only to do, uh, you know, for, you know, blessings, for good fortune, for protection, but they also seek angels for revenge when some type of unnecessary harm has befallen somebody. Again, the mythology of the more violent nature of the angels has created this reputation where people actually go and uh, look for these particular angels. Now, these particular angels have uh, Hebraic names. Uh, they're in obscure mystical literature. However, they can be found. Um, they're, not the, the, not, they're not the type of angels that we typically uh, think of and are familiar with. Um, not especially not in the current books like you know ask your angel or some of the guardian angel type of uh, literature out there uh, number three angels care about you and your relationship with the divine the divine plan whatever whatever that is I don't um, seek to, to know what that is the divine plan and I think that some of this is intentionally kept hidden from humans. On the other hand, if you want some knowledge that you don't normally have, maybe uh, maybe a piece of what your purpose is in the universe, there's an angel to that for that, the Archangel Raziel. He is the, the angel that one petitions to uncover hidden knowledge, to uncover secrets, maybe things that are going on in your life that you're not, you can't put your finger on. So he's one of my particular uh, favorite angels to work with. So Raziel. Uh, also, one thing to think about, uh, well, let me show you kind of my experience working with angels. Uh, there's one particular angel that I have been working with. Uh, his name is Amiel. Now Amiel, just like you can tell from the word, you know, Latin from amor, love, he's an angel of love. So let's say that you aren't particularly satisfied with your circle of friends. What you can actually do is petition Amiel to work with you, to do whatever is necessary. Um, in my particular case, I kind of want to attract uh, some some extra friends that are uh, loyal and who are um, very much uh, willing to spend time with me. Um, angels that, I mean, not angels, uh, that's Amiel, but uh, friends just that for a degree of closeness. And I know that that is, is actually something that um, some people struggle with, for example, you know, you may be in a circle of acquaintances who you don't really necessarily call friends, who you're not sure whether to trust them and maybe they not trust you. Um, but I guess in my case, I'm trying to expand my circle. Uh, so I've been working with uh, Amiel uh, to do that. Uh, it also, Amiel can work with you on um, maybe issues so that you become a better friend or maybe so that you can unlock some of your inner charm or charisma that may be stored away because of past experiences so that you become more of the type of person other people would want to be and be friends with. So it's all, MEL is a lot about inner work. So I kind of, I really like working with Amiel. Um, and to kind of give you some examples of how this has played out, uh, since I've been working with Amiel, a few things have happened. One is that, this is the big one for me, 
is that I had a good friend in, uh, when I was going to school and college. And then a couple of years after we graduated, um, I started seeing them. And, uh, and this is kind of a professional contact, kind of works in my industry. And this particular person, uh, I'd try to speak with them and um, they just did want to give me a cold shoulder. Um, you can tell when someone's intentionally not looking at you at some professional meetings and get togethers in the community. And this went on for like 12 years and I tried to keep my energy and my heart open to this person and just nothing happened. So <laughs> a couple weeks after working with Amiel, this person sat next to me intentionally, I think. There were other places to sit in a professional conference and started talking with me. We started joking just like we did in college, like we didn't miss a beat. And it was complete 180 and we just had a ball and it was um uh, it was something it was it was astounding um so friendship magic <laughs> okay um another thing is that i had a um a guy friend who similarly i haven't heard from in about uh 10 years who um, all of a sudden gave me a call and wanted to hang out wanted to have lunch you know we got the chance to spend time together but it's been, you know, 10 years and we, uh, you know, it was even 10 years ago, it was kind of like a rocky type of relationship. So, um, you know, that's example number two. I've noticed that when I've been working with Amiel, people are tend to be more friendly toward me in public, I'm more likely to come up to me and say hello and be friendly and smile and um, I think this is a kind of a result of working with this particular angel. So, Amiel. And uh, by the way, if you ever if you want to work with Amiel, uh, I'll put a link in the bottom of my description for this video. Um, there's a book called Angels of Love by Zana Blaze, which you can check out. Also, uh, I just want to kind of give you kind of a reminder that in a lot of these videos, I actually, if you want more, know more about the subjects, I actually intentionally put some books at the bottom below the description, so feel free to do that. All right. Uh, leave a comment. Please subscribe and like. Hope you're having a good weekend. Enjoy Memorial Day, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.